Welcome to the Pet Friendly Real Estate Agent brought to you by your friends at Annie Mac Home Mortgage and your other friends here at Annie Mac Works, where we are very interested in helping you become a pet friendly real estate agent. So thank you for taking the time to join us here today. My name is Carrie Fitzpatrick and I'm one of the lucky co-founders of the Annie Mac Works Productivity Platform. We partnered up with the Service Animal Center of America to become the legal and medical experts and give you the information that you need to become a pet-friendly real estate agent. Becoming a pet-friendly realtor doesn't just allow you to know the pet law, doesn't just allow you to know what you can and cannot do, but becoming a pet-friendly real estate agent really sets you apart inside of your community at large. It really sets you apart inside of your farm area. It sets you apart in front of your sphere of influence. It sets you apart from other people, just like as if you got your staging designation, let's just say, from Annie Mac Works or your renovation uh, lending cert certification as well. Those are things that you can do to set yourself apart in the community. In addition to your MyWork Suite account, making digital marketing brochures for every single property that you list. Is that going to necessarily help you sell your listings faster? Possibly. But even if it doesn't, the most important thing that it does is show you as different inside of the real estate community, something that you offer that no other agent offers. We have set out to educate real estate professionals across the country on how to eliminate pet problems from their career. The Pet Friendly Real Estate Agent is education that teaches you how to better serve your community and your consumers. We partnered up with a law firm out of New Orleans, Louisiana, and what we did was we found out everything about ESA. We found about everything out about emotional support animals and how the law that was put into effect in 1988 was going to make it so that people, landlords, communities, condo associations, and even some counties um, in the United States of America were, were discriminating against people who had pets, certain types of pets, certain breeds of pets, certain size of pets, certain types of pets. So we are partnered up with this company so that they can teach you and protect consumers from being discriminated against. Simple, simple stuff. As you get certified, take special note to these purple, purple words. Uh, they will uh, definitely help you in the future, if you know what I mean. And once you get certified, first you're going to take a test. You're going to listen to me for about 20, 30 minutes, and then you're going to take a test and you're going to indicate that everything that was in purple was listened to. And once you're certified, you're going to be on the national registry for the pet friendly real estate agent. We're going to offer you marketing materials. You will be well educated. You will be the subject matter expert and the valued specialist that people look to, look towards and look forward to doing business with because you've taken the time to learn about their pets and how to protect them and protect their pocketbooks as well. So it's a very interesting law. It's a very interesting when, when we found out about it. But And I want to tell you how we found out about it. I'll tell you, we found out about it because my dad has Cody Ross. Yes, Cody Ross was named after a Florida Marlins baseball player uh, by my mother. He was actually a gift to my parents from myself and my sister. We wrapped him up. We put him under the Christmas tree. Well, kind of wrapped him up. You know what I mean? Put him under the Christmas tree. My father was livid. Um, we gave it to my mother for, gave him to my mother for Christmas. And my dad was so mad. Nobody asked me if I could get a dog. Nobody asked me if I wanted a dog, blah, blah, blah. Well, fast forward about five years and Cody and my dad are best friends. Now, the thing about that is that my dad lives on an acre and a half in South Florida. And he wanted to move and he wanted to move to Pine Island Ridge which is a little golf course community they have condos in there he doesn't have an acre and a half to take care of there's no pool filter to change there's no you know any of the stuff to do but it was a pet free community and he couldn't go and he couldn't take pet Cody and he was not going to go anywhere without Cody well Fast forward to me doing a lot of research and finding out how to solve for that. 
And now I'm here to bring that to you. So super excited about that. But the way that the whole thing went down and the way that what I've found and what I've researched and what I have proven to work, is. the real estate agency to be aware, be aware of a few things. One is the Fair Housing Amendment of 1988. In addition to that, there are fines that can be levied against landlords or condo associations or counties that discriminate against emotional support animals. Take notes on anything that I put in purple because those notes are going to be the thing that you need in order to pass your quiz because in order to be certified, you're going to need to be quizzed and make sure that you know all of the pertinent information. We would hate for you guys to go out there touting yourself as a pet-friendly real estate agent and not having the answers that your consumers need. So let's talk about a few things that real estate agents need to be aware of. First thing, the Fair Housing Amendment of 1988. Number two, fines for discrimination or violation of that act. Number three, rental condo or homeowners association applications, what they need to do with those. I'm going to talk to you about the pet registration myth. I'm going to talk to you about the medical prescription. And I'm also going to talk to you about fulfillment, execution, and the support that you'll receive from the Service Center of America. So one very important number for you to write down is the number of Mike Genovese, who is your contact person for Service Animal Center of America. Simply by virtue of you taking this class here today, you can call him for all your questions, all of your concerns, and he will have the answers at his fingertips. So his number is 985-231-9301. Again, that's 985-231-9301. Zero one, and his name is Mike Genovese. So write that number down, save it in your phone, do anything that you can to make his number well known to you. Or you can always call us at 1-800-299-WORKS and we've got it for you. The Fair Housing Act of 1988, or the American Disabilities Act, co covers a number of things. But the things that we're gonna focus in on here today is the comprehensive housing reform that was put into that Act it, back in 1988. Now, it's been in effect, but not a lot of people know about it, which is why I'm here to tell you about it. It addresses all different types of discrimination, and it also has special provisions for support and service animals. Now, support and service animals are two different things, and this is an important test question coming up because it's in purple. An ESA, or an emotional support animal, may be prescribed Listen to the wording of that. Prescribed for stress, PTSD, anxiety, depression, all of those different things. But a service animal must perform certain tasks. See, in order for your pet to be classified as a service animal, they would have have to have gone through 185 hours of training to become a service animal. But in order for your animal to be classified as support under the Fair Housing Act of 1988, your animal can become a prescription and a simple, simple uh, questionnaire can handle it for you, for your consumer. I'm sorry, not for you, for your consumer. So what do I mean by that? Well, unlike the average pet, a support animal must be treated like a medication, not like a pet. So really, the prescription that's being given to your consumer isn't actually the same thing. It is very different. I know I'm going a little long on this, but it's really important and a lot of people get this confused. So let's just think about this. A service animal offers service. They are taught to turn on lights, to open car doors, to bark at crosswalks for people who may need a, a, a white tipped cane, to be the hearing dog for you know people's uh, doorbells to be rang. They have to go through all of those different trainings, but a support animal comes with theirs already built in. All they have to do is love you, support you and treat your anxiety, uh, your depression or your PTSD. As long as the art of petting will calm you down, your pet can become a prescription. 
I'm not making light of it, but it's really as simple as that. Um, as long as you're hooked up with the proper, the proper documentation for your pet, so many things will change for you. So if your pet is not a pet at all, it actually becomes a medication, what does that mean for your consumer? What is it that your consumer no longer has to do in order to do that? They no longer have to have a pet deposit or they no longer have to pay a higher pen, pet rent. This comes in extremely useful for college students. So you're saying, well, I don't rent to college students, Carrie. Why do I need to know this? Well, let me tell you why. Because you sell homes to parents who have college students. So if you're giving them information, you're setting yourself apart. You're teaching them how they can get around some of these uh, local laws in order to go trumpet with the national law. Well, what better way to do that? So if your consumer does it properly, they will be able to either move into a condo association, say they want to buy a condo, a million dollar condo on the beach, but it says no pets. Well, guess what? They don't, they can, and they can take Sparky with them. So no pet deposit, no pet rent. That's saving your consumers money. It's also letting them know that you have answers inside of it, inside of your chosen field, right? Now, the thing is, is that if people try to choose, try to charge your consumer. If a, if a landlord or a condo association or a county tells your consumer that they cannot move in because you they have a pet, guess what? They could be fined up to $30,000. That number is just shy of 30,000, it's 29,788, but they can be fined that. And you know what the federal government is doing right this minute? I just read a, an article about it the other day. They're actually sending out spotters, just like they do to bars and restaurants and convenience stores for uh, the sale of underage tobacco and alcohol. They're actually sending out spotters to different associations, to different condos, to different places, to different counties, to see if they are discriminating against people who need pets for support. So uh, there's a big hubbub, hubbub going on uh, inside of that right this minute. So how do you make an application for housing, a rental application, a homeowners association application, or a condo association? The applicant is not required to disclose their ESA or service animal on that application. Your consumer gets to circle no, if they ask, do you have a pet? And that's a big deal because it makes it all just go away. They have that letter. They know that they're covered. So when they find out that they do have a pet later, all they have to do is hand them that letter and the whole thing goes away. If not, they could be fined $29,788. So let's think about that. They can say yes and furnish the letter at that time, but they don't have to. The law states that they do not have to. So what are the exceptions to that rule? Well, one of the exceptions to that rule is that if a, if a multi-family property home is owner occupied and has less than four units, then they are ex exempt from that. So that is an exemption or an exception to the rule. Also, if your consumer works without a real estate agent, or a real estate broker. Now this is pretty interesting for you, right? Think about that. Because if you've got a FISBO that's going out there and you know looking at homes and they're in this situation, if you educate people and you make them understand they have to work with buying or renting, they have to work with a licensed real estate broker, brokerage, in order for them to be able to use this letter. So Oh my goodness, how wonderful is that news for us as in, in the real estate community? So what is this myth about pet registration? You know, your pet doesn't get put on some government list. Remember what I said earlier? It's not even about the pet. It's about you. It's about maybe you're going to be put on a government list. No, I'm just kidding. No, 
this is about you, not the pet. So there's no government list that your pets put on. Your pet doesn't need a badge or a vest. You don't have to walk around with a, you know, cone on its head so that it can be identified as a support animal. No, it is just your pet. It's just a, your prescription. It would be no, no different than you walking through the halls with your prescription bottle in your purse. So the patient is diagnosed. The pet is your prescription from your doctor. Pet registrations that you may see online are fraud. They are not real and they serve no purpose in this matter. You need to have a professional ESA letter prescription to be protected under this act from 1988. I'm going to go over a few uh, slides with you and I'm going to go over a few things that you need to know that happen once an ESA letter diagnosis is made by a medical professional. So I'm going to pose a few questions and then I'm going to answer the questions for you. Can a landlord refuse an emotional support dog based on breed? The answer to this question is no. An emotional support dog can be any type of breed and are exempt from breed or weight discrimination. So that's in purple. That's going to be on your test. So make a note of that. The next question is, can a landlord charge a pet deposit for an emotional support animal? Now, we've talked about this at great length, and the answer is no. Landlords may not charge additional rent or demand a pet deposit for emotional support animals. These animals are covered under your prescription. So once that diagnosis is made, can a landlord ask for proof for your emotional support animal? Yes, a landlord may ask for an ESA letter from a licensed mental health professional. Can my landlord ask me to register or provide registration proof for my ESA or my emotional support animal? The answer to that is no. Registration is not a requirement for emotional support animals. Now I have another question. Do I have to disclose my disability to my apartment manager or landlord? And as you already know, the answer is no. You do not have to disclose any medical information to your landlord. Do I have to let my apartment management company and landlord know that I have an ESA Prior to signing a lease, if you remember back to my purple, no, you may let your apartment management company know before or after you sign your lease. So let's talk about execution, fulfillment, and support. This company is a national network that with medical and legal experts. There's no charge for consultation and there's no charge for a six, without a successful ESA diagnosis and letter that allows your consumer to circle no on do you have a pet. I want you to think about introducing this pet friendly real estate agent to the community at large, to your sphere of influence, to the people that you may know that have pet problems. Think about this as it relates to you and doing a search in your area. You know that when you have somebody who says, I love Sparky, Sparky's my favorite and I cannot live without him, that you have to go into the MLS and you have to say, pet's okay, and that yes button. You've done that before, right? So now you've got a list of maybe four properties that say pet's okay, but take that out. What happens to your list? It grows exponentially because you are no longer concerned about whether or not pets are allowed because you know that you're working with a consumer that has a letter that has been certified that they need that prescription in order to live a fulfilled life. So as we end today, I want to take a few minutes to share with you some ads that you can run in your social media, you can have for your website, um, 
We are here creating ads for the pet-friendly real estate agent that we will be posting on social media to go for that national registry. And feel free to email service at AnnieMacWorks.com in order to receive these videos or commercials, if you will, to be able to advertise yourself as the pet-friendly real estate agent in your area. I want to thank you all for coming here today. I want to thank you all for paying attention to this legal mumbo jumbo that I was talking to you all about. And I will see you next time at the National Lunch and Learn League event. Have a great day, all.